I also want to thank you, the um, organizers, for this great event. Um, to be honest, I feel like coming home. It's um, all the different viewpoints and all the work that is being done these years around schools of architecture and practices in Northern Europe is just fabulous. I'm so relieved. There's hope. <laughs> Um, I'm going to talk about a project, or you could say um, a scientific and practical journey, which I'm not doing on my own, of course, um, at a daily basis. I'm a full professor at the Royal Danish Academy um, in the Par Department of Architecture, and I'm heading a small research center called CNARC, Center of Industrialized Architecture. And I think um, you just said, <laughs> when we met, why industri industry? And just to um, come with a disclaimer, um, we're dealing with architectural, or you could say the practice uh, of construction, which today is in industrial. Uh, but of course, we also deal with craftsmanship, and I'll get into that as well. But I'm going to talk about a project um, about thatch facades for the green transition. So I also had great conversations with Susanna already. Uh, we have much to share, I realize, and um, I also start to believe in what we call the, uh, the common unconscious, which is happening. Um, but as for the project, um, I'm going to talk about in a bit, uh, because I'm going to make a, a first a small discussion into a different, uh, you could say, the previous work. But the team behind the project is, uh, as you may see, a group of, group of thatchers, uh, a clay mason, um, the office of, uh, of the Thatcher's Guild in Denmark, who actually spreads the information across the, um, the craftsmen um, in Denmark. And then we have the Institute of Fire and Security, engineer, fire engineers, and the group ourselves, um, which is a mix of, we all architects, um, and we have different backgrounds coming from practice and from academia. So it's also mixed media, as we've heard already. But to begin with, uh, what we're doing and have been concentrating on for some years in CNARC is what we call radical tectonics, meaning that we are studying, or the, ba the theoretical basis for our research is tectonic. Um, so we're looking into the, um, the core aspects of tectonic in contemporary construction and architecture. And we realize that if we want to deal with it, we want to push it to the borders of what is possible to do uh, and to sort of um, examine the limits uh, of, of tectonic practice. In 2017, we had a um, exhibition at our school. There's usually these local calls. We have um, an external review panel. Um, and we came up with this project of, of building three different kind of walls. Um, that were to be radical te tectonic. Um, and we wanted to ask the question, how can we build architecture and build according to absolute sustainable principles? Because we want to define, uh, to, to define um, sustainability from the perspective of the, 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 the global boundaries. Oh, here, we, here comes the climate changes. <laughs> it's happening right now. Um, so, so this exhibition, we wanted to, um, to look into, in case we look at the, the global boundaries, and we're talking about absolute sustainability, how and, and what can we build when we look into circular construction or circular economy. So this had to, to deal with the life cycle perspective. We came up with, um, with these three different walls, one in, one in wood, one in, in straw and wood, and one in, um, you could say, optimized, brick construction with uh, insulating blocks, reused bricks on the outside, and unburned bricks on the inside, also to optimize the climatic um, uh, properties. When we do construction, we do it accordingly to, you could say, proper regulations. So these, are, these, these different wall types could be built um, according to, to um, the building codes in Denmark. Of course, they had to be clad with different codes, sorts of surfaces, but um, so this is how we do. We, don't, we, don't, we, we try not to build pavilions, and we try not to build things that are not realizable. It's difficult. Um, part of this job, 
or part of this work, we, uh, we, we defined or invented, a very good colleague of mine had tested this together with students, um, the construction material pyramid, in which we were, according to having to lower the CO2 emission, have the highest sort of circular, um, uh, you could say, loop, uh, or the longest number of loops uh, as for the different materials, um, and a very high, you could say, environmental uh, reuse or you could say low environmental impact. We defined this uh, pyramid in order to uh, select the different materials, knowing that when we have to build also according to uh, contemporary construction, we would have to need uh, metals or different sorts of um, materials that would be high up in the, in the pyramid. But what we realized coming from having been trained in contemporary architectural schools and knowing that concrete, bricks, and glass, and steel is sort of like the materials we deal with, this was quite a shock to us to see how little of that actually could be applied in case we wanted to be absolute, absolutely sustainable. But as for the three walls, we realized that maybe the most difficult one and the one that would require most sort of um, you could say battle with, um, with the building regulations would be the, the straw prototype, um, which we defined as this sort of systems thinking. What we didn't know at this, at this time in 2017 was that there was a company emerging um, and they, they now produce uh, prefabricated uh, straw elements, uh, full size, wall sizes, um, called Eco Cocoon. And it has, it's, it's a merger, of, or it, it's, you could say it's a company across different countries and we have one of the, uh, the main partners in Denmark as well. Um, so this is actually, this is happening while we were doing this. So when we um, dealt with it, we also knew that the fire, the, the issue of fire, and of course the thermal regulations of the wall, the protection of the surfaces was, was a main issue. So this was sort of like in the back of our heads. Um, Parallel to this, um, I'm also running or heading um, the candidate program, fourth and fifth year um, in, the, in the School of Architecture. It's, the program is called Settlements, Ecology and Tectonics, and so we cross over many of the topics also we see today. And um, about the same time, the, the Thatcher's Guild came and knocked at our door and asked if we wanted to do some, a, a collaborative study um, as for using REED. We have this two and a half month course, which runs um, late, actually this semester, we're gonna look into uh, to straw, which is interesting to go back. Uh, but we have different themes every year, and the students work together with, um, the, with the people from industry with particular materials, they, they're different from year to year. And we publish these small publications, unfortunately they're all in Danish, but, but there's a lot of images and drawings from the students and from, from the partners involved. So in this project, or in this study, um, the students were directly involved with the Thatchers and they had, had a small course, a two, a day, two and a half days course, uh, in order to learn how to treat the reed, how you actually specify or select the reed, and how you work with it um, and, and, and in regular roof construction. So they got sort of feel of the material and the craftsmanship, not, not the least. So the way they work, uh, they're as we also have said, seen many examples um, earlier today, they work very, very intuitively. We try not to restrict um, their, their methods or their questions. They, they actually define their questions themselves within this overall framework. So they go deep into these uh, different experiments, uh, material experiments, and um, Torbjörn, who's my colleague sitting here, he was actually a student at that time. He can, and he will join us in the panel, he, he can also, um, inform you about that. So it's, we work on a group basis, so the groups are usually also, um, how do you say, uh, provoking each other or asking questions ac across, uh, across the projects. So usually we have a, a series of very, very interesting, you could say sometimes radically tectonic, but also on the edge of not really realizable, but, but always asking very, very interesting questions. And we try to have these small, exhibits, this is right you know, outside our, our, our office door. But one of the projects that was particularly interesting was this one um, by this group of three students who wanted to test what if, and they took this regular project, which is affordable housing uh, designed by, by uh, 
what are they called, uh, ONV Architects, which is a small office in Denmark that has specialized in module, modular building, as we saw yesterday, and um, for, I mean, low prices, uh, but high quality. And um, they wanted to test what if we, we, we put reed on, 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 as, as the cladding of these, uh, of these buildings, what will happen with the architecture what would, and how, how, how does it have to be treated in order to, to stay as for the regulations. So they found out that they had to push back uh, the entrance of the first floor in order for, for escape opportunities. You can run along the facade. And they also had these sort of hoods coming around, around the, the window openings, which, which I also find a very interesting architectural feature. And that is also for fire uh, safety when, when you're being saved out of the window. But what they also did was that they were testing the different um, sort of, how they could treat the reed in terms, or as for it shouldn't burn. Uh, quickly or to see how it would burn in, in different sort of situations. So they treated it with, um, with lime, with faluröd, uh, which is a, a Swedish paint which is mineral based, and with, uh, with clay and without any treatments. And as you see here, it may be difficult to see, but they tested it just by, by simple means, um, right outside our window actually. <laughs> so. Uh, we could sort of follow the, the fire um, brigades. Um, they didn't come, but, but it was very, very uh, exciting. Also, they left, as you see, the, the, larger, the larger piece here. They left that also in order to see how would it wash out as for the weathering over time. But this project just kept staying sort of in, in our minds. So due to the fact that we were collaborating with the Thatcher's Guild, um, and it was Corona, and we were sitting looking at into, I mean, how can we save the world? We have to do some things. We realized we had to formulate this project, which is partly um, uh, funded by the Ministry uh, of Environment. So it's, it's a joint, it's like these innovation fun, uh, funds in Denmark that are partly industry and part, um, uh, partly um, governmentally funded. So it, we, it's, we actually started last, uh, May, and, um, and it has just been like expanding uh, crazy, <laughs> crazily uh, ever since, because we sent several different uh, abstracts, as also for this conference, and at all the different um, conferences or triennales, whatever, the pro project has been um, accepted and, and embraced in ways we had never realized uh, would happen or th thought of. But similar as, as Susanna just said, um, we, we knew that in, also in Denmark we have traditions for treating uh, the surfaces with either with reed, as you see here. This is also from the pictures on, the, on, the, on your left, uh, left is, um, is actually also from the southern part of, uh, of Denmark, also facing the Baltic Sea. So there must have been some knowledge exchange there. And the small um, a water mill is from the Open Air Museum uh, outside Copenhagen, where you see there's a clay lining on top of the of, of, on top of the um, of the thatch roof, and we haven't really been able to figure out with the building archaeologists if this is due to fire uh, impregnation or other reasons. But at least it does have an effect, and also we found in old um, uh, archives that. There were recommendations uh, as for when, when you were having thatch roofs that you would um, cover or treat the, the thatch around the chimney uh, with clay in order to prevent uh, the fire um, to happen. So this was sort of like the initial, some of the initial ideas about uh, how, to, how to treat this project. So we were then um, defining this number of tests we wanted, to, we wanted to do, also due to the fact that in 2020, we had new regulations in Denmark. We have, I don't know, I think Denmark is one of the, you how to say, the, 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 the nice little girls in the class that always do what EU is telling them to do kind of thing. So, so we already have in 2023, a full LCA uh, requirement uh, when you do your projects. Um, we have, um, in 2025, we have to have a reduction of 70% uh, uh, CO2, and 2000, uh, no, 2000, wait a second, 2025, and 30, it has to be 100%, right? So, 
As for the regulations, it's, it's really moving fast forward, but also as for the fire regulations, I don't know why, but it, it's also really extreme. And they have now um, decided in Denmark that all uh, building uh, construction has to be accepted um, as uh, according to a catalog of what they call pre-accepted codes. And the pre-accepted codes, who define them? Industry does, right? So in case you want to do something different, if you want to do like the Wattensee Museum, as Dorte Mandrup did, which was built right before the codes were, um, uh, uh, how do you say, accepted, um, and that's the reason why this museum could never have been built today, which would have been a disaster, I think. Um, you can do what we call function-based testing. So this was, this was the initial discussion we had with the fire engineers as for this project, where to start. Because they said, what you want to do is not pre-accepted, act so actually you cannot do it. You can only do it as a function-based testing. Usually function-based testing is very expensive, and, um, and we have to follow the international standards as for the fire testing. So when we first came, uh, Tobia and I was actually working on this part together very closely, and we were, uh, Tobia was drawing these um, sections of, of the, uh, of, of, the, of the wall, and then we learned very quickly that it's actually only the thatch itself they test. They don't test the, the structure behind. And they, wanted, they want the thatch to be inside this inward corner. As for the chimney effect, in case the fire burns, it runs very quickly up the facade. And um, so when we first came with the thatchers and they looked at this little sort of funny angle, they were like, you know, um, even, even what we call the thatcher shovel, it's like the size of this angle. And uh, they usually have thicknesses of 20, uh, 18, between 18 and 25 centimeters thick. And it's like, well, if we thatch this, this has nothing to do with thatch. I mean, what, why, I mean but they, the fire engineers kept saying, this is international standards. If you want to do it, you have to do it this way. And they were just about, uh, you know, saying, well, this, what, how, what, why does this matter? But then, because these are the, how do you say, the, 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 the chairman of the Thatcher's Guild and a very, very skilled uh, Dutch Thatcher, they were like really challenged by the engineers. So they say, well, we're going to show you and we're going to prove it's going to work. So what we did was that we, we, we made uh, altogether 14 different um, items or test objects, and they were uh, treated with, with different sets of um, mineral um, treatments uh, from, chalk uh, from lime water to lime to, uh, to clay with uh, horse ma ma manure, um, uh, li uh, clay um, uh, glue, all different kinds, and of course we have the baseline, which was untreated. Um, we had two different ways of treating it from the inside out, meaning that it was the inner layer, and you would have the thatch looking uh, as, as Reed, uh, Reed uh, does, from the outside, or from the outside in. So we had these like, it, was, it had to be very rigid, it had to be very limited, and it was very, very difficult for us not to like, why don't we do this, and why don't we? But the engineers were kept telling us, if you want to test it, and we, wanna, and we have to say something, specific about it, this is the way to do it. And here comes uh, the little test items into this oven. Uh, it goes for 20 minutes. You have this gas flame on the bottom, and you kind of think, oh my god, this is a disaster, because of course it burns. Anything would burn 20 minutes with a gas flame, right? So it's like, why, why, why this? But there's, <laughs> there's a, they used to say, meaning I mean, there's a there's a meaning with the craziness sort of, Anyhow, um, the engineer we worked with was saying uh, a very funny thing about this image, is that this is how you do the testing. You have two guys standing with their arms crossed and then one looking at the numbers and turning up the fire. But what they're testing is actually how the, the fire uh, develops and of course the, um, the emissions of the smoke. Um, so then they turn it off or and then they take it outside and they inspect it and we look at it and we look at them looking as if, you know, is this good or bad sort of thing. Um, but this is going on and here are their items. And um, we kind of thought, well, this doesn't really look good, does it? But actually, three of them look pretty good, surprisingly. Um, and we actually could notice, I mean, we could watch this with the very eye that they hadn't burned. They simply hadn't burned. And why not? Uh, what's happening? I, I'm not reading aloud from what's standing up here. Maybe I should, but 
The best in test, those are the boulder clay or the moraine clay, it's called. It's also the same, similar as you use for the, oh my God, um, for the um, uh, rammed earth. And we have the, 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 the horse doll or the horse manure and the clay cellulose. Um, and what we see here is actually what they tested against. This is regular um, uh, boards. Uh, it's a five. It's called a Fibrix board, which is a um, uh, fire-treated, um, uh, how to say, approved board, um, which is, which is also acting according to the fire regulations. So what you see here is actually those three that were having you know, the, the red the red circle is actually competing or actually acting better. Than, than some of these, um, uh, or, th or this particular board. So from that perspective, we were very, very happy. So we also knew now that we had to scale the test into a full one-to-one um, -one scale. And we only took one of them because it's, it's a matter of, of money and time. Um, it's very time consuming to have the, the Thatchers and, and the, the clay mason. And we also had, it, it's about buildability because when you start putting the clay um, in a process together with the thatchers. Of course, the thatchers, they don't want the clay. The, uh, everything gets dirty and, and muddy, and, and, the, and the, the clay mason is sort of, he has to have a certain sort of uh, rhythm in the way he sort of uh, put, uh, adds, adds it on the, on the surface. And we also found out um, that there was a particular interesting thing to test is actually to add uh, clay plates into the structure as, as for hindering the, the, the fire to move across the facade. This time, the items were um, exposed to fire, a gas flame again, but for 30 minutes. And as for the first one, as you see, it was uh, uh, turned out after three minutes because they were very afraid of their, of their whole test set up. Um, we still have that in our office or right outside our office. And, but the other two actually um, worked pretty well. They were staying there for 30 minutes and they're hardly burned. Um, this is the one uh, that was turned off. This is the one with um, regular plain surface. However, when the, the carpenters at the, at the fire institute were building the rig, they didn't consider the fact to actually uh, how do you say, close the, the, the cavity behind the, the rig. So it, derp, it burned from the back, which was uh, very puzzling to everyone because the, the thatch itself didn't burn, but the rig burned. So it was kind of funny. It was 1,000 degrees behind there, and they were very worried about it uh, as well. Um, but they found out that it's actually, it worked like an oven because the thatch was sort of, um, how do you say, insulating, um, whatever they said they could still use the, the results. And this is the final one with the, um, with the inserted clay plates. And what is very interesting here, besides the guys with the, with the helmets looking very interested uh, at, the, at the fire experiment, because I looked at the, um, at the graph on the screen and I kept asking someone to tell me what was happening because it looked pretty scary, it went like boom. And then um, they told us, don't worry, because it's staying straight. Nothing, that, this means that the material does not add to the fire, it's just the gas flame. And this was like, fantastic. So, here it's taken out. We also looked at all the charcoal stuff that is left there, because that's another thing. If we have uh, biogenic mat uh, materials in the facades, the firemen are often worried that it falls down when people are trying to be rescued or escape. So this whole thing about what is actually left uh, is very important. And the final conclusion was that clay is a very efficient uh, protection for vertical, vertically thatched surfaces. Actually, the, the, the engineers believe that it has a similar um, fire class as, as class two in Denmark, which is great. So I'm gonna do this in one minute. Um, what we did next is actually, there was another ex exhibition at our school that was called the 70% less CO2. And we thought, well, we're gonna test what we just tested in the, in the laboratory together with the fire engineers. So we want, now wanted to sort of combine the thatch with the um, straw bale wall, but in this case, the, 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 the um, prefabricated elements. So we built this, uh, this wall section, and we, we, we sort of cut the section ju just right above the foundation and before the, the, the end of the roof. Um, we sort of t 
took all the knowledge from the different projects we did and sort of added into this. So it has a clay, um, a clay plaster on the back or the inside on, r directly onto the um, onto the, the to the straw bales. It has a it has a um, what's it called? Yeah, it has a net. A net. Um, we did the um, the clay plates uh, in the facade. Um, we didn't put as much clay onto it because it's, it's really, really heavy. It becomes heavy duty. It's very difficult to manage uh, the, the construction. And we finalized it for, for the exhibition. And for that also, we took our own medicine as for um, the construction material pyramid. So we, we, we put the materials into, into the pyramid to see how it actually acts as for the, the CO2 emissions. And the construction material pyramid we have this disclaimer that is only what we call upfront carbon. So it's not, uh, it's, I mean, it's like the first two phases of the LCA. So, but we're looking at it in, in the initial design phases as a, as a way to decide which uh, materials and, and how to, to, go, to go broad. But, but if you look at regular constructions for one family houses, there's built about 6,000 6, houses of those every year. They're about 200 square meters and they're built like, like this in um, a lightweight concrete in the back wall and bricks in the, in the front and rock wall. And we wanted to say what, what, what in case if we do this experiment, they sort of exchange this sort of construction with this total, uh, you could say absolutely sustainable um, biogenic construction. We have very, very low uh, emissions. But to conclude, what, what is this all about? Um, we're not, we haven't finished yet. Actually, we, we want to, the next project or the next step in this project is gonna be to test the humidity, um, how it, we, we keep speaking about this breathable construction and how the humidity or can, can move back and forth and be absorbed by the materials and stuff. And it, we really have to find out how it works in, in, in structures like this. And we also want to build what we call a warm construction without cavities between the layers. Uh, so it become, we can calculate it as a full insulating structure. But anyway, that's gonna be the next step. But what we realize is that it's all about ecologies. It's about how these things are interconnected. And it also, of course, raises ethical questions as for where do the materials resources come from? Because this is, this is which I didn't get, to, this, I could have like three hours lecture about this project and the project's linked to it, but it also has to do with the, the waste from the agricultural um, industry. Um, and also has to do with how we treat, as we heard earlier today, the, the landscape, uh, how it's like included in the overall design thinking from the very beginning. But it's about being critical, uh, curious and humble. And, but what to improve? In this case, the objectives, that was the, uh, you could say, the tectonic, the questions about the tectonic. And um, the systemic was about mixing or um, looking at both the, in the uh, you could say, the industrial aspects, um, the systemic aspects, as well as the craft aspects. And the specific in this case was the thatch. And we believe that if you have this sort of approach, you can look at any material or any sort of technology and finally, defining the principles and create the data and, and proof by construction. Um, we also think it's, it's, a, it's very much a matter of, of, of yeah, disseminating, sharing, and, and being collaborative as, as, for the, as for these kind of projects. And then two final images, which I cannot say much about because we're not part of the project as such. But at this very moment, there's gonna be built the school with a thatch facade. And if you look at this design, features, it looks a little bit similar to what I showed you earlier, but this is actually a school by the two offices, Kent Architects and Henning Larsen Architects. Um, it wasn't approved in the first, um, in the first run with the, uh, the local authorities due to the fire aspects, uh, but they're now doing um, uh, fire testing, what the, this function-based fire testing. They do both the, uh, the vertical and the horizontal, which is how they tested, and I looked at these images when they were shown to me, and I was like, oh my God, it looks terrible. It looks like everything burns. Are you using clay? And they said, no, we're not. So they're using the regular uh, glass fiber membrane. They put it in the back, and it somehow doesn't act, I, to, my, uh, to my belief, uh, very well. Um, as for the, it hinders the fire. I mean, or it slows the fire. Um, so this is actually now slowly, um, moving forward. Thank you. <laughs>